created by a collector and run on the passion that the hobby, or some might say collecting lifestyle, entails, Mezco has been bringing both unique and licensed products into the industry for over two decades with no signs of slowing down. From a multitude of popular characters from television, movies, comics, and cartoons in their 112th Collective series, aptly named for their 112th scale size, to their ever-popular Living Dead doll series, Mezco does not fall short on classics or innovation. And innovation is what brings us here today. With Mezco's all-original, extremely popular Rumble Society line, fans get even more options in the 112th scale realm through amazing creations that cross over into other realms. Rumble Society has brought us fans a trio that looked like they were pulled from a pink punk rock band with a monochrome dress code in the Pink Skulls Chaos Club, an eerie yet pensive seeming Nosferatu whose age seems to show equally on his tattered tunic as his face, even a mascot for the Mezco toys that looks like a giant humanoid ant. In body only, Gomez totally kept the head. Those are only some examples of the already extensive Rumble Society line, a line that just grew a little bit bigger. Growing on the already established, skull-faced, turban-rocking Supreme Sorcerer Atticus Doom, Mezco has taken us deeper into his individual lore and powers by offering a Necroverse version to showcase the true powers of his supernatural left hand. The original version came in full color with a bit of a John Constantine feel to the costume, but a little old world flair with the button styles and the red scarf. Ascot? And an orange flame emitting from an emblem at the center of his turban on his head. The Necroverse version, the Necro version, if you will, has a similar base character with the skull head, the flaming emblem turban, and a trench coat, only now he's in all black with green highlights and a green skull head and the emblem in flame. Well, yeah, you guessed it. They're green. But let's not just talk about this figure because we were able to get our hands on one here at the channel and we can't wait to take a closer look at this awesome character with you. Hey everyone, my name is Jonathan, aka JK of JK Collects, and in this episode we are taking a closer look at the Mezco Toys 112th Collective Rumble Society Atticus Doom Necroverse Edition. Hey everyone, welcome back. Here it is, the Atticus Doom Necroverse Edition, the, the Mezco exclusive for the uh, Rumble Society, so just very cool. This is the first one of these that I have been able to get my hands on. I always heard about them, and it was always too late because they sell out so quickly, so how exciting it is to get my hands on one of these, especially just the effects of it, the color palette and all that stuff, just the the, the glow-in-the-dark green and the black and all that, and this, just the skull. The whole thing is just absolutely 100% my world of uh, taste and, and whatnot, just the whole Halloween-y, uh, necro-verse type stuff. So very cool. And I mean, just the whole experience has been very exciting, right? So even the box, when it showed up, it had a Mezco uh, toys tape specific on it. When you open it up, it had black plastic bubble wrap. I mean, I know these things are simple, but it's just those little extra touches that just get the mood, right? Because this is the Necroverse Atticus Doom. Anyway, uh, enough prattling on. I'm gonna go ahead and take it out of the plastic. This is exactly as it came in the box. Uh, didn't wanna open anything without having you all with me. So let's get into this, right? Let's take the plastic off of it. Doesn't really change anything about the appearance. We kind of looked around the box a little bit, got that Mezco exclusive thing. Uh, I don't know if I've got, is that box damage right there? Or I'm assuming it probably is. Maybe just like a little bit of rub or something. Or, or you know what, it's part of it. It's like a little bit of smoke across his face on both of those. So I'm going to assume that that is intentional. There we go. So my mistake, if that is something that I should have been aware of. And then we can just see just the drawings of the character. There's the Cthulhu head. Sorry if I mispronounced that. I've heard it multiple ways, but that's the most common one. Get all Atticus Doom. We've got the Cthulhu Fraction sticking up, I believe they're called, 112. So just super cool. And I just love the presentation of it. But I've prattled on about the box enough. Let's get into said box and look at everything that comes with this. That was another like huge selling point uh, when I was looking at it online. It's just it like kept scrolling through pages of talking about accessories and features that were coming with this thing. And I was like, First off, it already looks amazing, and then you're giving me all that stuff. Okay, empty box, so we've got the whole set of trays out, but you're throwing all that stuff in there with it. I mean, that's 
that's just it's it is investing in the people who are investing in you is the way that I see it, right? So there are a lot of different things, this scale of this price point, and just by looking at all of the options, nothing really matches up with what they're investing back in their people. So, okay, let's start with these bottom trays and pulling stuff out. It's got a little plastic protection right there for this really cool little backdrop. And it, it's, it's, it's a blow mold, right? It's that blow mold plastic that we, <laughs> new from uh from childhood and all that just it's i don't want to say super cheap but it's just that cheap feel but you can just tell there's a lot of work and effort put into the sculpting and just the whole the details of this thing and the paint work nothing looks sloppy about it right so it might be that thin blow mold plastic but that's it or uh form mold plastic am i, am I thinking it? it's not blow mold it's it's heat form maybe or something like that uh tell me what it is if, if i'm just getting it absolutely wrong in the comments if you know and i certainly appreciate that bit of education but either way very cool to see that just a nice little backdrop for the guy <clears throat> and then wow all right so let's just start taking accessories out right so there's our papers <laughs> which i mean you definitely need a guide with this one there's so much going on um let's start with this lower layer where we have a stand right and then these i believe are the shackles of hastur two for the hands and two for the for the wrists uh and if i mispronounce any of these things i do apologize i might be putting the wrong emphasis on the wrong syllable uh but there's so many fancy necroverse names it's it's hard to keep up uh and i do apologize if i make a blunder if i do please please correct me let me know in the comments uh how i have absolutely butchered a name or a pronunciation all right so let's pull that off so much to go through there's our 112 collective bag to keep track of all of the stuff that comes with it loving this stand right that's very cool uh, i'm going to leave it right there because i won't really mess with it in this one but it's just very neat to see that artwork on it and we've got one little foot peg uh, for it and then of course a, a prop stand if we want to have them doing some exciting stuff in the air and look at there there is the top hat right all right so we'll pull that out and we'll set the stand stuff to the side yeah okay so just one thing on that stand very cool i just want to make sure i don't miss any cool uh accessories or anything like that okay so that is step one we'll set that tray to the side and now step two for the second tier tray Let's get all these accessories out of here. So I see we've got more uh, pieces for the stand in here. So very cool uh, to have, you know, even more options, right? So lots of accessory options, also lots of posing options if we have a lot of different stand capabilities, right? So here's a little bit smaller one uh, with that piece coming off of it. Okay. So here are our Cthulhu uh, little fractions that come with it. There's a straight one and then there's a bent one for a little bit of action. Uh, these oh these are the portals so very cool right so a hand is designed any of the hands are designed to snap into this side and then this side would snap into uh atticus's arm so it looks like he's putting it in the wall and then it's coming out of you know wherever uh so that's that was one of the major things that i was like wow that is awesome uh i can't wait to just kind of play around with that okay and then here's kind of a fedora hat here is, uh, looks like just some spell stuff, right? So we've got a little bit of spell stuff going on there. This one may be another kind of spell type thing going on there. Um, I'll, I'll have to do some research and see what that is. These are for the Blade of Zion, right? So that's the blade and then some flame effects to go along with it. And wow. Uh, oh, here we go. I cannot miss the uh, Eye of Mordred, I think that one is. Yeah. Okay, so that is all the little accessory pieces aside from the stand of tray two so <laughs> so much to go through and now let's look at the top tray up here the main display one from when we first pull it out and let's see what we've got going on here okay so there's that top tray piece and i'm gonna go ahead and pull old atticus himself out to get him out of the way and then here is a little bit of a like a i believe this would be the mystic mist right uh feature that comes along with him uh this one i believe this is for the ooh, the cindered palm effect right uh that have no idea how to pronounce that thing so i'm not even going to try it's a cool looking little staff thing we'll take a closer look at all of this stuff as we go through here is the cthulhu head here is a claw so just fantastic and then here are some additional hands i mean gosh look at that okay let's pull these little hands out so we've got several different options in here 
my goodness. Thank you for your patience as we dig through all of these accessories. Hopefully you have one on the way uh, if it hasn't already shown up and uh, you get to go through this excitement of pulling these pieces out as well. Uh, here are two little just flaming eye effects. And this is another thing that I was very excited about, right? So the little book, and I'm about to absolutely butcher it. The Elena Alishrier, something like that. But it's it's this kind of spell book thing. And let's see how we open it. This is going to be the first thing we take a, a little bit of a closer look at because it has real paper pages, everyone. I mean, look at this. And each of these pages, wow, yeah, of course. They've got a decoration, kind of spell-looking stuff on it. That, I mean, that is just fantastic detail. How cool is that? Completely unnecessary, did not have to do it, but went and did it. So the papers inside have decorations on them. They're all cut very cleanly. They do look like a book. And then the outside of the book, look at the detail on this thing, right? So that matches this little spell work that we have here. Uh, it's got a little peg on it to stick on something. So that matches the outside of that book, I guess, to imply that he can be holding the book in one hand and casting the spell right here. It was, almost looks like a shield. But uh, how neat is that? And then just like the almost pearlish type metallic effects on the corner, the spine. I mean, look at the detail of how even the spine looks like it is a leather bound spine. Let me see. If I can, let me shift them. There we go. I'm going to shift to manual so we can get a little bit closer. All those other things are kind of throwing it off. I mean, look at that, just a little detail in it. And then here on the other side, and it's the back of the creature. <laughs> I mean, how cool is it? I mean, it's, it's the things like this that you just know collectors were behind this. People who believe in what they're doing and have absolute just love for the hobby, the, the lifestyle, and they are putting all that love into it towards what a collector is going to purchase. And if you compare this, I mean, there's some wonderful things out there, right? So like the Moffex, I've done a few of those, the Superman, same price point, but doesn't come with a fraction of the stuff or the detail, I gotta say. So it, hats off to Medicom, right? You know what, even dare I say a, a tip of the fedora to Medicom. That's right, I did it, I said. Okay, so moving on. So just looking a little bit closer at this, just the paintwork on it is very well done. Um, it doesn't meet the whole part that is raised of the plastic, but it's not poorly applied. You see what I mean? It's kind of, it's still fairly well centered on there. There's nothing that really shows there was any kind of opportunity or issue. It just, it, it's not the full size of it, which is ideal because I think if it was trying to be the full size, then it would be, it would leave more room for potential error. So either way, very cool. And that is a, it's a hard plastic. So it's, gosh, it's like, what next? Okay, so let's just take a look at the uh, Mystic Mist here. And this is a pretty solid piece of uh, some plastic or acrylic or whatever. Um, but yeah, it's just super neat, right? So it's just going to have that surrounding, like it's, it's a swirling mist forming around a spell or something being cast. And you can see that it's it does have that general kind of spiral shape to it. Like it is building up and, you know, there's a rotation happening to it. It's just very neat. And it's, it is cast. It's a pretty solid, uh, we'll say transparent, semi-translucent plastic. Because you can still see through it, but the, the, the visibility is a little blocked. It's a little frosted in some places. Okay, let's look at the uh, Cthulhu fractions, I think these are called. Not just like tentacles, but actual fractions. So very similar in design, uh, it, you know, the basic of what it is, right? So it's like, there's this one and this is it basically curled up, right? So it is curled. There's not like a wire or anything to it. Uh, I don't know. This one does. Oh, this one has a wire in it. Okay, so the details and everything else. I'm just going to set this one down for a second because we're going to take a closer, closer look at it. I mean, just look at the little details on this, right? So all those little bubbles going on there on it. Let me see if I can reduce the light because it's kind of washing out this lighter gray a little bit. Okay, that one is as low as it will go. Let's see if we can change this. Yeah, there we go. So now we can see those details a little bit better. We need darkness for the Necroverse, right? So there we go. I mean, just look at that. All of the little suction pieces going on there, but then all these just little bubbles and the details on it. And the way that that little bit of darker green uh, fills up in there just to kind of highlight the detail. You know I love that, right? Because if you're going to put the detail, make it pop, find a way. Okay, we'll set that to a side because I want to get to this one, right? So very similar paint. I want to say the paint is done better on this one, right? Probably because it's straighter. They had a little bit better 
platform to work with, right? So like even these creases, they have a little bit more green in them than the curled one does. And the green is a little bit more pronounced on here. So it's like a little bit darker. It's like they did a little bit better job. And it might be because of the material that it is. But this, this is just, this is just where it's at, right? I mean, how many times have we gotten figures that have cool effects like this? And it's like, if only it had a wire in it so it could take on some of the poses or just dynamic things I would like for it to do instead of just be straight or be curled like this. If only I could stretch it or twist it. This one gives that ability so fantastic and, and obviously really well done. And it's a, a fairly flexible, almost foam feeling plastic, but I mean, it is a plastic. I think it's just kind of the paint that gives it that. Okay, let's stay on that Cthulhu type animal thing. We've got a nice claw right here for uh, for one of the hands. And I mean, it looks like it came straight out of uh, Davy Jones' locker, right? So the, the, the pincer moves, very happy to see that. Definitely wouldn't make much sense for it to be fixed. But hey, it happens, right? And then we've got that same detail in there. We've got the darker green in with all those little those little bubbles of texture and detail. And I just, you can see the lines, just the little creases in it, just to kind of show the detail and make it just have that little bit of extra realism and life to it. Even if it is a glow in the dark green color, right? Okay, and since we're staying on the Cthulhu, I'll tell you what, if I am mispronouncing this name, I'm just going all in apparently because I've said it about 10 times. Look at this head. Talk about fantastic detail. I mean, I don't even know where to start, so I'm just going to say, just look at it. Would you look at this? So, I mean, just um, you've got the little pieces poking out here, the little spikes. You've got all these little details and creases just sculpted in there. Perfectly well done. The, the front pieces are a little bit flexible, not too much, but not enough, like not stiff to where you have to worry about breakage, right? They're obviously not, they're not very flexible. They are flexible because of how thin they are, but they're not intentionally flexible plastic. But I mean, just look at it. You know, you've got the way that these are sculpted. These go all the way up, even though they kind of meet right there. But then the separate one there, and then this one coming out from here just adds that depth and just gives a little bit of realism and even getting the paint up under there where it didn't have to be, right? From looking at it head on, you have to look at it like that to tell that it's not there. And if it's on the, you know, on the body, it's almost impossible to get that angle. So again, that extra attention to detail is what makes this such a great investment. I'll tell you, I'm already sold on all of these Rumble Societies. In any future ones that I see, you better bet we're gonna have it on the channel if we can get our hands on it. Here's this fun staff thing, not 100% sure on the name, not going to even try and butcher it. I did see it online. I was like, wow, I'm not even going to try that one. But look at it. I, I know I just keep getting amazed by the sculpting on these things, but that's the way it should be, right? Everything you pick up is just even more amazing than the last. The little uh, maybe spells or whatever etched into it, just really well done. And they truly are etched into this. And then they have that little bit of darker green to help make them pop and to show in there. And just look at this kind of like a reptile type head, right? I mean, it's got like little fangs coming out of it and just what a, what a creature this thing was. And then it's on the top of this just crooked piece of wood for a staff slash walking stick. And I mean, how cool would you be walking around with one of these, right? on any day, not even just Halloween. And then just the recessed part of the eyes, the eye sockets, and then that green paint in there. And it's also not just the same amount or tone, right? So it gets a little bit darker in there to add a little bit more depth. And then we've got the symbol on the forehead also etched in with the green. To, gosh, I just, I could look at each one of these pieces forever. Uh, it feels like, or, or you know, for minutes, hours, but I don't want to waste too much of everyone's time. And here is the uh, the good old Blade of Zion, right? Uh, this one, a fairly simple construct, which is fine because it is also very well sculpted. I am kind of surprised that there's not a little bit more detail uh, paint work to kind of make things pop on it. Uh, and it almost looks like there's a little bit too much paint right there to kind of cover up the those the balls or whatever that they're etched into it. You know, some of the details almost missed because there's too much going on uh, paint wise. It is a flexible plastic. So I'm happy for that with it being so thin. So you don't have to worry too much about breakage, but here is where I will definitely excuse the plainness of it 
because it goes into these flames. And why would you have him holding the sword without the flames ever? Because look at how masterfully done these are. The sculpting on it, just the, it, very good at getting that flame effect of, of this kind of moving through the air and the flames following behind it. Or it just being held like this and they're burning upwards, right? And as you can see, they are a translucent plastic yet again. They've got the green paint highlighting a lot of different flames and just kind of showing how it gradually changes in tone. We've got different layers in here. I mean, it, the amazement just keeps coming, okay? So there we go. That was our Blade of Zion. Let's take a look at this little spell here. So another one that's got a bunch of those same... Uh, are they the same? Do I see some duplicates in here? You probably may have already spotted some if there are, but I imagine there may be some duplicates, but still of that same uh, mind, I guess. These symbols matching kind of like this. I don't know if there are any duplicates or not. I don't waste too much time uh, looking at it that way. But they are definitely of this in the same vein, right? And this is one of those spells being cast. So again, it could be holding that book and having this out there or holding this in one hand and casting the spell because this seems like it would give some powers as well. Of a translucent plastic, it's like a very, very light smoky gray, which is great for, you know, having the what would fill in the void of a spell aside from these open parts here. And it's got that little peg on the back, just like the other one did, the one that had the creature on it. So again, very cool. This one just has a little bit more eerie waviness, almost kind of a slimy uh, idea to it. Okay, well, let's look at these two hats. We'll double them up, right? So we've got our kind of crumply fedora looking uh, going thing there, right? And I like that it is kind of a, uh, uh, a flat black shade with that glossy black band on it, right? So it's it's simple but enough to bring just a little bit extra. Let's bring some light in because it's a little bit darker piece. But the the way that it's sculpted gives it that nice crumple effect and it makes it look like it's not just plastic, right? Which it is. I mean, it's just sculpted out of plastic, but it is sculpted very well to have those crumple effects that like a realistic hat, especially one with some miles on it would have. So very cool with that. And then there's our top hat, same idea. Uh, and it's got some some kind of dents and chips on it, right? Like a well-worn and used hat would have, especially for someone casting some spells, right? Maybe a magician flipping it over, getting some scuffs on it. And then we have that shiny uh, black band to offset the, uh, the flat black. Uh, and there's a little bit of a bow sculpted into that plastic. If I had anything to say, you know what? There, there could have been a way to bring more depth and uh, separation with that bow, but... That's me trying to find something to be picky about. Okay, so here are two different types of uh, little spells, right? Um, these were, what were these called? Uh, shackles, shackles, that's what they were. They were shackles of Hastur. Again, I could be absolutely butchering it. This is like for the wrist area, and this was for, I believe, like the forearm area. But there we go, cast out of like a translucent green plastic going with that same green theme, but you can kind of see through it, which is cool. Kind of reminds me of some Doctor Strange type spells, right? Or, uh, um, why I'm, I'm blanking on the name, but these spells are just fantastic. Uh, <laughs> the Spider-Man villain, come on. I, geez, I, I don't know why I can't think of it. It's because I'm just so mesmerized by these things. I keep trying to say Mephisto, but that is not it. It's the guy that does the illusions. Um, anyway, okay, so moving on. It's gonna to come to me later on and I'm gonna blurt it out. Okay, so and then we've got two of each, right? Two for the forearms and two for the wrist. And then here are our portals. Yeah, we're still going through accessories and we are this long in this video. How about that? I mean, so much to look at. So here are the portals, right? So here's the outgoing portal that snaps into where the hand or arm was, right? And so it looks like it's just kind of going into that hole sculpted out of that same type of plastic that we see with uh, like the spells, right? So it's kind of got that smoky gray to it it's got a little peg so it can stick into something and uh you know what this is this is moving does it rotate does it come out i don't know i don't want to force it but it definitely rotates which is kind of neat right so if you don't necessarily like the angle you can kind of play with it a little bit and then this bit's just like splashing out so cool and then the other side apparently any hand is designed to uh snap into that obviously with the the peg portion that this is replacing so it would be able to come out, whether it's a, uh, a Cthulhu piece, right? Or just any of these other hands, this little snake hand, 
So very neat about that. Portal, um, and then several different hands in here. So let's look at these. I've got, I know I saw two that had the, the eye on the back, right? So there we go. And that would be um, maybe for the centered palm, I'm assuming. Maybe for the centered palm effect. I'm not sure. I'll have to do a little research, but it has the eye showing on there. Very well sculpted hands, right? And they're gloved hands. So not a lot of extra detail uh, for the hand itself, but it does show the hand with that crinkly glove bit to it. So very cool there. Uh, I have two more hands, two grip hands, right? To hold on to things. Uh, these are obviously both left hands, right? And, uh, you know, same detail, same gloved hand style going on there. And here we have another hand, right? And this is a gloved hand. This was a kind of a spell casty type hand that we see all over the place, like with Marvel Legends and things like that. Typically comes with a lot of the female characters. I see a little bit of excess plastic hanging off right there. It's like a little piece of uh, maybe casting flash that didn't quite come off. I think it did come off now. I think it fell down, which is great. You know what? Let it go. Goodbye. And here is a green glowing hand for that mystical left hand that he has. Very cool. Uh, so that's, that's just neat. A neat little extra feature there. Okay. And then here's that snake hand that we saw, right? So it's a, it's a full on hand that has little snake fingers coming off of it and they are a flexible rubbery plastic so you know not a not a lot of concern about breakage or anything being too sharp and i just love the little little black snake eyes on there right just, it, i mean it just it's like it glows in the light right there magic okay we're almost done with accessories so here are our um flaming eye effects right so one for each eye cast out of that translucent gray that kind of fades from a darker gray to a lighter gray. I appreciate that they're both not identical, right? So one goes in one eye and you got a little bit of flame here and then a little bit more coming out of one of the other eyes. So that asymmetry just helps with, with realism, right? Because it's not going to come out evenly. Uh, and here's the centered palm effect. Again, we're dealing with that uh, smoky gray and we've got, it, it goes into a little bit of a green color right there. So just neat on that. And it's like a, a lighter, almost clear to a darker blackish gray into the green. And this goes kind of from the clear to the green. So it's just neat to see those extra effects in there. And we've got a space for it to just slide right onto, uh, I'm assuming a hand, right? Because it's a palm. And then last but not least, the eye of Mordred, right? So this sticks into one of his eye sockets and it's got it's got the little chain attached to it, so you don't lose that little extra eye. Uh, you know, like, uh, you know, Thor maybe could have used one of these in the Infinity War, right? Because he needed that extra eye. But there we go, there's that eye of Mordred, and very well done. Like, the paint job on it, the sculpting on it, just, it, it looks like a, a creepy little magical necroverse eye. And then the chain on it, you know, not, not, Poorly done, uh, fairly flexible to prevent breakage. It would have been neat to maybe see a little bit of uh, something to, to help highlight the chain detail, maybe like a little bit of a light gray wash or dry brush or something. But you know what, if, again, if these are the things I'm complaining about, because it took that long to get through all of those accessories just to be able to get to the guy himself. And I've already pulled off some of the plastics. I'm gonna pull the turban off because you're also able to see his brain. And another kind of eye type thing up in there. That was one of the additional features that they said. If you pull the turban off, you can see that. So very excited to see there. And then there is our turban with the flame effect, right? So very similar to the original version, uh, but it is in black. And this medallion and the flame are a green as opposed to like, I believe it was gold. And then here is the skull head, right? So again, the original had a, uh, a white skull head. And this one has kind of that glow in the dark green shade to it but the same basic design right and uh nice wide open eye sockets for the eye features that we can do how oh, how eerie is that right so much fun okay now let's take a look at the rest that we got here so the jacket these look like they're yeah tiny little buttons right so tiny little buttons that will just gently wedge apart uh because i don't really want to force too much with something this small i like to be still pretty careful even though i'm not too worried about uh, detail because the quality, uh, quality and, and integrity, I guess, is, is apparent, right? So side to side tilt, pretty good. Uh, the neck feels like it's very separate from the torso. And as you can see, it's like a translucent tra plastic in there to kind of give it that floating head look as best it can. 
uh, up and down pretty good, right? So that's definitely beyond looking straight forward. Down, not, not really much, right? So that still kind of looks like he's looking straight forward because if anything, that would be forward and that was down. So down, kind of some opportunity there, but it, it just wouldn't be right if he couldn't do a full exorcist rotation. And there we go, we've got it. Uh, and then up in here, the clothing masks the, the arms abilities, but so let's pull this. Let's see if we can pull this coat off, right? Just everything, the cloth goods, it's all so well made and so perfectly fitting. I almost don't want to pull it off, but you know what? So I'm not going to, but uh, I'm going to pull it back up because I'm a little, little, little afraid to do that. I believe that you can, but I'm not going to force anything. I don't want to break anything, uh, but the shoulder does have good mobility. Um, does it feels like we've got a little bit of rotation right here maybe the bicep tricep and then the arm flexibility you know not too shabby right it seems like maybe it's at least a double uh, elbow in there uh, hard to say but with that flexibility it certainly feels like it has it because it bends and then it bends a little bit more um doesn't feel well there doesn't feel like there's any forearm rotation but obviously we do have wrist rotation and then we've got good wrist wiggle capability because of the type of joint that it is, right? So it's that two pins coming out of the ball. I'm sure it has a specific name. Uh, the other side has that same flexibility and we've got another hand that has the eye on the back of it. This is a balled up fist hand and we have another balled up fist over here. And just this coat, I mean, just the way that this is made and everything in the pockets. Do you see that? The pockets are functional, right? So you can actually, you can put things in the guy's pockets. And this is a 112th scale figure. And remember the price point for it. So if you've ever been on the fence for one of these, I'm going to go ahead and say absolutely. Uh, if you're thinking about picking it up, definitely do so when the opportunity strikes. Uh, we've got mid-torso movement, and it does have full range. So it's not just a forward back. And the forward back is pretty decent. You know, the clothes do kind of hinder a little bit, but not, not too bad. There's definitely some good posing capabilities in here. Uh, waist rotation. I don't really feel anything. I'm not going to force anything. The legs, uh, the pants are going to interfere slightly, but I mean, that's still a pretty good range of a kick right there. Um, doesn't feel like we have, well, yeah, I don't think we have upper thigh rotation, but the leg itself at the joint does rotate fairly well to make up for that. Uh, and the knee, Okay, I ran out of memory, so the camera stopped recording. I'm not exactly sure where that happened, but uh, in looking at the leg, right, it was I feel like it was somewhere around there. So with the leg up here, good movement on that, good mobility, everything. The foot does not have an excellent forward, backward. Forward's okay, backward non-existent. Uh, ankle sprain, maybe, not really a break, right? Just kind of a normal pose. I don't really see much capability of, I mean, you can rotate it like that and say the ankle's broken, but that normal side flip doesn't really do the trick. Um, but yeah, so I mean, the, the clothing, the fabric, everything is just so, so well made. Uh, the seams are pretty small. The kick forward, not bad at all. Kick backwards, you know, not, not the worst. Uh, pretty natural, right? We can't really kick too much farther back than that without forcing it or doing a speed kick. Uh, but I mean, just look at this. So we're not really dealing with paint apps on this. We are on the head and they are obviously fantastically applied and on all the accessories. So it's just the detail of the fabric. I mean, look at these tiny stitches and how impossibly wonderfully perfect they are. And then the tiny little buttons. So everything in green and black versus what it was with the original version, uh, the tie and the massive collar along with it. I mean, everything is its own piece. This is kind of a a bit more of a solid material, uh, a thicker fabric, I guess. But then everything, I mean, even look at the detail on the belt. The, the paintwork on the buckle of the belt is just so well done. And I mean, these, there's like, <laughs> there's a little piece of string right there. So, hey, how much more realism can you get with clothes? And then the functioning pockets, it, it, it's killing me, right? It's just fantastic. And it even looks like the jeans, the, the pockets don't seem like they're functional, but they do have that little lip to imply that they are. And it's just so well done, uh, so well done. So again, as I mentioned, 100% sold uh, for myself, for the channel on these uh, Rumble Society Mezco special edition exclusive toys, because this is just absolutely amazing. One side note I wanted to add uh, that happened after filming in messing with the portal piece. 
where it connects to the arm, just an FYI to be very cautious um, because I was being, I thought, very cautious and the joint, one of the pins, snapped off when uh, pulling it out of the portal in that attaches to the arm. So just be very careful. It seems like uh, maybe a potential quality issue. The, the fitment is very tight, so I was not surprised, but just wanted to throw that heads up. Well, that'll about bring us to the end of this episode. Thank you for taking the time, as always, to join us. If we ever do a review of something that you are trying to find for yourself, please follow us and DM us on Instagram at at JK Collects Toys so we can help with the search if we do not already have a way of getting one. Also, if you enjoyed this episode, let us know and let YouTube know by subscribing and clicking that like button. The more that happens, the more YouTube can recommend us so we can hopefully reach even more collectors and help them find the things that they need. And if you'd like to see some more videos, we have some links on your screen right now for you to check out. And remember, collecting or not, we are all in this world together. Let's look out for each other. Thanks.